getting more areas. I need to show you two more types of areas. One is the weird boundaries one, which is what I actually was problem number seven of last night's homework. But I'm going to give you another example of it and just make sure visually that you see what's going on and see what your options are. Then I'm going to talk about integrals where they give me non-functions, where instead of y equals x squared plus 2, they give you x equals y squared minus 5, you know? So it's not a function. It's a sideways parabola. And, and I'm going to teach you how to get integrals in the y direction. That is, you're going to be adding up horizontal rectangles instead of vertical rectangles. Oh, I guess we're starting. Have you clicked it? Oh, OK, thanks. Fatima, such a good camera lady. Um, and then we're going to learn Cavalieri's theorem, which is just a, a conceptual idea of how I can justify getting volumes of solids by slicing the solids into lots of little wafers. Like here, the solid of this thing that I have in my hand is actually just a bunch of triangles that I'm going to slice up and then add up the areas of these triangles. Or, or this solid here, you know, this solid is actually just a bunch of little squares that I can slice up and get the volumes of the little wafer, square wafers, and thus I get this total volume. And the same with this, these are square wafers. So Cavalieri's theorem is our justification for being able to do that. And then we're going to start with volumes. And I'll start with the easiest type of volume problem, volumes with square cross sections. And I'll tell you right now, the hardest part of doing these problems, and yet the most important part about doing these problems, is to make a good drawing. So I don't care how bad you are at art you will be making three-dimensional drawings because you have to in order to ensure that you can get correct answers I'm gonna need you to make three-dimensional drawings so you'll learn that that might be the only thing that you get out of this class but you'll learn how to do three-dimensional drawings after we're done first weird boundaries here it comes weird boundaries okay. um, find area of region bounded, find area of region bounded above by y equals 1 fourth x squared and below by y equals x minus 1 and the x-axis. Well, what do you suppose I'm going to ask you to do first? Draw. Yeah, please draw this. Yeah, graph it. So please do that now. And I'm going to do it myself. And you know, just do a table of values. There's nothing, nothing tricky about this. Just plug in 0, plug in 1, plug in 2. Just do a table of values. Plug in a 1 and I get 1 to 4. Plug in a 2 and I get 1. So there's my parabola. So after you've drawn it, um, 2 comma 1, why did I miss with my parabola? should get the, the weird areas from there to there. Okay? 
So that's the weird area. I'm actually going to make a, a larger version of that. So here we go. I got one, two, negative one, one. So are you okay that this is the area we want to get from a zero to two? I'm going to give you one minute. Go ahead and please write down how you're going to get that area. There's two basic ways to do it, and you can choose any of those two. I make this guy kind of round. And you don't even have to calculate it. Just write down the integrals. Yeah, just write down the integrals. I don't need you to do punchy punchy. Time's up. Someone give me, what answer did you get? Kylie, I know you got an answer. What'd you get? Um, I did the integral between 0 to 2 of 1 fourth of x squared minus x minus 1 dx. Okay, just like an integral from 0 to 2 of 1 fourth x squared minus x minus 1 dx. Good. And then what'd you do? Well, what she got, the, she got the top guy being 1 fourth x squared, and she got the bottom guy being y equals x minus 1. So I want you guys to see that what Kylie just got was actually this area here that I'm making pink. She got all of that pink area, the area between the black graph and the green graph from zero to two. And so what she did was fine, but then what, she, what is she gonna have to do? What's that? Yes, yeah, subtract this part out, and what is the area of that part? It's a triangle that's a one by one triangle, right? Well, yeah, you guys okay with that? So, so that'll work. Wow, this guy died. This pen died. Okay, so so that'll work. Did, how many people did it her way? Okay, good for you guys. Yeah, you got this big area, then you subtract it off a half. Did anyone do it a different way? Yeah, Andrew. Um, I did the integral from zero to one of one fourth x squared dx. Good. Plus the integral from one to two, um, one point x squared minus x plus one dx by distributing the negative. Part. That's fine. Okay, so he did two integrals. He got this, he got this black area, and then added it to this black area. He essentially did the most direct answer. How many people got Andrew's answer? Okay, beautiful. Did anyone do it a different way? Well, hey, did anyone do the integral of y equals 1 fourth x squared from 0 to 2? Oh, and then subtract by 25. Yeah, yeah, you, you essentially, you know, you, you get that entire area, and then you subtract off a half. So this would be the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 fourth x squared dx, and then minus a half. 
So, so you see, there, there's a million ways to do it. Just choose one that's correct. It's like you know, getting telemarketer. Okay, okay, hold on. Okay. Um, all right, well, that's it for weird boundaries. Any questions or issues? All right, then let's go ahead and do uh, Y's. Y. Getting sideways areas <coughs> with respect to Y. Okay? I, I just want you to see that if I give you a normal area like this, you know, from A to B, and I say, get me the area under the graph from A to B, the way we've been doing it is we just add up an infinite number of vertical rectangles. Each rectangle has a width of delta x, and so we add up all of the f of x delta x's, but then we use Leibniz notation, and we get f of x dx, and it happens from A to B. Okay? But what if I give you an equation in terms of y? That is, what if I give you something that looks like this, like that, and this is an equation x equals f of y, okay, and you want to get the area from c to d, okay? Well, there's two ways to do this. One way would just be to turn all your y's into x's and all your x's into y's and then make it look like this, and that would be fine. Or another way would be to just deal with it as is and realize that, okay, I'm not going to add a bunch of vertical rectangles. I'm going to add a bunch of horizontal rectangles, a bunch of horizontal rectangles where the width of each rectangle is now dy, not dx. This is a little distance on the x-axis. This is a little distance on the y-axis. And so this area ends up being the integral from c to d of f of y dy. You see, I'm just doing what I did with f of x, but since it's, you know, it's horizontal rectangles, the width of each rectangle is dy, and my function's gonna have to be in terms of y. So that's what we're doing, you know? And, you know, in x land, if I wanted to get the area between two graphs, where one graph is on top, let's say that this is f of x, and this is g of x, and I want to get that area, then you know I do the integral of f of x minus g of x, right? Well, what if I had another graph in y land where this graph was farther to the right? And let's say this guy was x equals f of y, and this guy here was x equals g of y. Who, who goes first uh, between those two graphs? Yeah, the guy on the right, the guy that's more positive. Here, the guy that's more positive goes first. Here, the guy that's more positive goes first. And you do the integral of f of y minus g of y, dy. You see what I mean? So hey, let me give you one to do and see if you can pull it off. Here we go. Uh, find area. bounded by x equals y squared minus 4 and x equals 1 half y. So I'll go ahead and step one, of course, is to graph it. Let's go ahead and graph that thing. And the easiest way is to just make a table of values, which is now instead of plugging in x's, you're going to have to plug in y's. Let y be 0, let y be 1, let y be 2, and figure out what your x's are. x is negative 4, 
when y is 1, x is negative 3. When y is 2, So I graphed them. I didn't do that great of a job of graphing, but you know, it's good enough. You got a sideways parabola and you've got a line. Tell me, what do I do next? Oh, is there a rally today? There's no rally today, is there? I don't think so. Good, I mean, that would suck for me. So now what do I have to do? I want to get this area. Well, what do I have to find now? Thank you very much, Abigail. I gotta find the intersection points. I need to know what that point is, and I need to know what that point is. Okay, I need to get the intersection. And what's the, I mean, the easiest way to get the intersection is to do what? Graph it. Okay, I can graph them on my graphing calculator. What else can I do? Just looking at these equations as they are, what else can I do? Yeah, set them equal to each other. So however you wanna do it is fine with me, you know? Uh, I, would, I would probably start off by just setting them equal to each other just because it seems to me visually that this is such an incredibly simple scenario, you know, that I'm probably just going to go with this. So I get y squared minus one half y minus four equals zero. And so at this point I would do Pythagorean theorem. I mean, I don't know, why not? y equals one half plus or minus the square root of one half squared, which is one fourth, minus four times one times negative four, all over two times one, you know? So now I'm just gonna do the, well here, I'll just add it up. I got one half plus or minus the square root of, what is that, 16, 16 and a quarter over two. So uh, I get y equal to, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just think that, uh, that uh, Pythagorean theorem is actually easier than graphing. What did I say? Who <laughs> my bad. But it's all the same. It's just a formula. Okay. So uh, I got 0.25 uh, plus square root of 16.25 divided by 2. So I got to 2.266, and uh, uh, negative 1.766. You guys okay with that? Those are my y values, right? This is this is the y value, 2.266, and this is the x, the the y value here negative 1.766. So that's what I'm going to have to integrate from. I'm going to have to integrate from here to here. Because remember, if you're doing it from dy land, you've got to integrate along the y-axis. Because these are horizontal rectangles. I mean, yeah, horizontal rectangles you're adding up, not vertical rectangles. So uh, let me uh, do it over here. Or maybe I'll not keep it over. No, I'll do it over here. All right. So I'm going to integrate. This area is going to be the integral from negative 1.766 to positive 2.266. Okay. And who goes first? X equals x squared minus 4 or x equals 1 half y? Yeah, 1 half y because he's on top, but he's really farther to the right. So it'll be a 1 half y minus... Uh, y squared 
minus 4. And then I want to tell you again, all your integrals for chapter 7 you'll be doing on your calculator. I don't want you to have to take any antiderivatives in chapter 7. So you're just going to do the punchy punchy on your calculator. Now unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but, but what are you going to probably do? Are these going to be y's when you do the punchy punchy on the calculator? No, you just make them x's because it doesn't matter. X's, y's, or z's, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. So I'm not going to give you another one to do on your own. I just wanted to demonstrate for you when you get non-functions in several of your problems tonight, you know, problems I think like 4, 8, 13, those sorts of problems are all in these non-functions. But you can get those areas, just, you know, deal with dy land instead of dx land and you'll be fine. You know, get the intersection points either by doing, just setting the two guys equal to each other, or if you need to, you can do it on your graphing calculator. You know, like in this case, if, if I wanted to do this on the graphing calculator, then I, I could have either graphed y equals x squared minus one, four, one half x minus four, and then find the roots. That, that would have done it for me. Or, or I could have just graphed each of these guys individually, but again, you're going to have to go to x land to graph them. So I could have graphed y1 equals x squared minus 4, y2 equals uh, 1 half, where is that, 1 half x, and, and then find where they intersect. But be aware that what you're finding is the y coordinates of the intersection point, not the x coordinates. But on your calculator, you're having to switch from y to x so you can graph this group of things. Alrighty, well hey, that's the name of that tune. Now it's time to do Cavalieri's theorem. Yeah. Here comes Cavalieri's theorem. Here, I'll get in that camera. This is a cylinder, correct? You guys okay with that? It's a cylinder. Yeah. And so the volume of the cylinder is given by the formula pi r squared h. All righty? But you'll notice the cylinder actually consists of a whole bunch of little disks. Okay? And you put them all on top of each other and you've got your cylinder. Go ahead and pretend this is solid, I guess. You know? But it consists of a bunch of little disks. So my question to you is this. What if my cylinder looked like this? Okay? Is this volume going to be any different than the volume if it was just like that? No. Why not? Why isn't this volume any different? Is this the same amount of disks? Yeah, what are you going to say, Daniel? I was going to say it still has the same dimensions as before. Yeah, it's still, and it still consists of the same disks. How these disks happen to be oriented is kind of irrelevant. It still consists of these solid disks. And so however this guy is configured, I still get the same volume than if it's like this. In fact, any solid, if I want the volume, all I have to do is just add up the volumes of all the little disks or all the little wafers, and that'll get me the total volume. And that's essentially what Cavalieri's theorem says. I mean, I, I could go into it much more, but, but that's enough. I just want you to be aware that the volume of any solid is going to be equal to the volume of the sum of all the little disks or wafers or, or whatevers that make up that volume. All righty. So we've got three minutes left. I wonder if I want to try to do uh, volumes with square cross sections. I don't think I am. Eh. Let's stop here. So on tonight's homework, please do not do this problem. And uh, we'll just start on it Monday. So you just got lots more area problems. Any questions or issues? Well, then have a happy Christmas. Wait, wait, it's not Christmas, is it? Not until final. Not until final. So have a happy weekend. Bye-bye.